Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing our series on the G3000. We're going to be taking a look at kind of the pre-flight side of things and getting it all ready for us to go, as well as configuring the PFT so that it's easiest for us to use. Let's get started. So right now we're sitting here on the ground at Martha's Vineyard. Uh, it's a pretty nasty weather today. Uh, definitely not something I want to be flying in the real world. I know everyone's like, well, I'm an instrument pilot. Let's go. You don't realize how bumpy this is. It's so bumpy, so uncomfortable that you'll be like, I should have just stayed on the ground. It's, it's miserable flying in instrument conditions. Trust me. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be taking a look at kind of the pre-flight side of things and kind of getting everything configured so that it makes most sense for us, depending on what our journey is going to be. So what we're going to be doing is a combination of using the PFD, our MFD, as well as our little GCT down here to go ahead and program what we need it to do. So we're going to set up a couple of different things. First things first is I'm going to come down here to the MFD button, and I'm going to go ahead and press the Flight Plan button. Now, the Flight Plan button is very, very useful and very, very simple to use here. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, one thing you need to remember is if you loaded this aircraft directly at a flight sim with a pre-built flight plan, everything will already be kind of here uh, waiting for you, ready to rock sort of a thing. So you don't have to worry about that too much. If you wanted to do things manually, though, we're going to have to put them in. So I'm going to press on Add Origin. We're going to type in our initial waypoint here. So we're starting at Martha's Vineyard today. I'm just going to press the Enter key. Uh, we're going to be flying via Norwich, VOR today, which is going to be ORW. And of course, our destination today is going to be uh, Bradley because uh, I'd rather go to Signature today. Press Enter. And so one of the things you're going to see is that uh, we have uh, multiple pages here and we have multiple options. So you're going to see we have an en route waypoint. We have a destination. Notice that our destination is not our en route waypoint. So one of the things you have to kind of watch out for, and I always find this one kind of funny, I'll go ahead and remove Bradley here, so I'll press Done. Now I'll click on Add Destination and type in Bradley. It's just that little teeny tiny thing that doesn't make that big of a difference, but um, as you're just going to start manipulating the different controls, uh, you might find that it's uh, not going to set up well. So now there's a couple more options that we have here, which I actually think is very good, and you're going to see that you have a proc button over here on the left. That is short for procedures. Now if I click on proc, you're going to notice we have an option for departure, arrival, and we're going to have an option for approach. We also have our activate button. So right now we're not going to be doing activations. That's for another day. So I'm going to press departure. And we're going to go ahead and see here that there are no specific departure options. Um, Martha's Vineyard just does not have one. If we wanted to, we could come in here. We could filter by runway. Of course, we could say runway 24. And again, there's nothing here. So unfortunately for us, uh, we can just do by departure. There's nothing, so we don't have to worry about that. If we were coming out of JFK or something, naturally your departure is going to be in here. You could select your transitions at the top. Arrival on the flip side is something we're interested in doing. There are many different style arrivals that we have at our disposal here. Now keep in mind when you call for your instrument of flight following, or if you follow for your instrument plan, they're actually going to tell you which one you're probably going to use. Or when you get there, they'll tell you. You can always come back to this page and adjust it. So we're going to be using the Stella one today. Uh, we have a million different choices here. Uh, the problem with this, of course, is all of these are Western. So if we wanted to use any of these, we'd end up having to kind of chop the points up. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to go ahead and I use use uh, Madison, which is going to be your option. Uh, runway, the wind today is out of the north. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's out of the southwest. So then we can go ahead and select that one. And uh, one of the nice things here is you can actually go to preview. Watch this. I show on map, you can actually see what it looks like. So you can see here that it's actually going to take us pretty far south. And uh, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, one of the things we can't do is we can't select Briss here. Because if we could select Briss, we go direct Briss. Because the Norwich is actually going to be over here. Now, one of the cool things here is if I click show chart, you're going to see that I get an actual copy of the chart. Now, what you're not going to do is have that button unless you have a Navigraph subscription. Uh, because we have this, we can actually see very clearly what all of our different components are going to be. In this case, it might be easier just to proceed direct mad and then go right and uh, kind of line ourselves back up north with a Bradley. That might just be something that I do. All right, that all looks good to me. I'm pretty happy. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the preview here. I don't need to see that anymore. It goes back to the regular view. Um, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to press load. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete Norwich. It just does not make sense to me. Uh, this is one of those things where you have to think about it. If you do this, uh, that's perfectly fine. I'll leave it alone. It's just going to take us a little bit of a zigzag today. So it looks pretty good. So now we have our next point. Uh, we're Madison. We have Briss. We have runway 24. And of course, so we have our location where we're riding. I'm going to go back to the proc page. I'm going to press the approach. And we're going to go ahead and assume we're going to be doing ILS for 2.4 today. One of the things that they do really, really nicely, let me go ahead and turn to the preview real quickly here, is you can actually see exactly what this is going to look like on the map. I'm actually, so I'll show the chart. There we go. And you can see this is going to bring us up this way, spin us around, and it's going to take us right down to the ground. 
which is perfectly fine for me. Bunch of transitions that uh, we can use the initial approach fix of Kibby. Uh, Kibby's not by, it's going to ask me for a course reversal. We are going to have to fly a course reversal. Uh, if you're wondering why, it's because we're going to be coming from kind of this direction. We're going to have to turn ourselves around and come back in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and load that. We're not going to go ahead and uh, do anything else to it. Uh, once we've loaded it now, we're actually in pretty good shape. If I zoom out now, you can see the uh, direct path we're going to take here. Obviously, like I mentioned, it takes us slightly out of the way, but everything's already pre-previewed, ready to rock. I'm super happy with this particular flight plan. I'm not worried that there's uh, anything that I'm missing. Now, one thing you want to do uh, when you're experimenting with flight plans, though, is if you actually press on the flight plan options buttons, uh, you have a couple different items here. Uh, one of the things you could do is uh, under map settings, if you could tweak some of that. I generally do not feel the need to do that kind of an item, but normally what you'd have under flight plans, you can actually store the flight plan in the real world. We can't do that, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, we can always edit our data fields. I wouldn't change this. It's just not something we need to change today. If you're wondering what those data fields are referring to, uh, if I actually click on here, uh, let's see here, estimated time on route. Now, if I actually go back, I'll go back one more time. You'll notice that it says altitude, estimated time on route slash distance. So you can actually change it and it'll actually update dynamically throughout your actual journey here. So you can see how well you're doing. I also appreciate the fact they put a hold in there for me, which is kind of nice. Uh, if I don't want the hold, of course, I can just hit that and say, remove hold. <laughs> Again, that's fantastic. I love the fact that you can do that that simply. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the VNAV. Now, the VNAV is a really, really cool tool that allows us to basically select certain altitudes we want to be at at certain times. The thing I have to warn everybody about VNAV, however, is VNAV does not go up, it goes down. It's not like an airliner where that's all integrated. But one of the things you'll see is we actually have a selected altitude here. So let's say I want to be at, oh, we're going west today. So I'll do, oh, somebody had a VFR moment. We'll do 6,000 feet, for example. I'm going to go ahead and press the uh, flight level. We can actually set that. Looks pretty good to me. It looks pretty good. Whoop, whoop. Go ahead and bop that. And you can see 6,000 feet is now armed. Now, if I come down here, we're doing 6,000 at MAD. They don't really like us at 6,000 feet in the real world. Usually, they tell us to go ahead and uh, do one of those things. So I can just come over there. And again, you'll notice that after I type it, if I press this, that is not the same thing as pressing this. So if you look really carefully, do you see this little thing right here that now marks that I'm uh, selected that? If I have done that, I have to actually go back and adjust it, do VNAB direct to that point. And then I'd have to go back and readjust that. That little pencil says that we've actually edited it. And you can see going down here that all of our approach altitudes and everything is looking pretty good there. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. Uh, you're not going to get any warnings or any VDAV lights or anything like that up there, only on account of the fact that I haven't done anything with this. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, we're going to go up to 6,000 feet today. And like I said, we're going to cruise around. We're coming down to 4,000 at Briss. And of course, we can use the VNAV to help get us back down from that. Our approach and everything has all been pre-selected. We are looking amazing at this particular point. And again, normally we could store this flight plan. We could load the flight plan. Man, it's getting warm in here. There we go. Uh, of course, we could adjust some of those items depending on what we needed for a given flight. And it's all going to depend kind of on what we want to do. Once we're happy with our flight plan, I'm just going to go ahead and press the uh, MFD button one more time. And all that's going to do is have everything ready. Now, some people, what they like to do is they actually like to go ahead and have the aircraft in a position where, you know, when they're on their flight or something like that, they can kind of leave it open so they can keep track of it. Um, what I usually do to that effect, if I'm not immediately working on something, uh, GTC, cross side and full sky mode. Oh, no, I hate it when I do that. <laughs> That's just giving you a heads up that you split the two screens like that. All right, so of course, I can leave that over there on the right while I have my PFD or can have my radio collected. And we can actually observe as we're enduring our journey here, all the different components of our particular journey. So let's see, I'm actually going to go to MFD, left pane. We're going to go full screen here. You're going to get an angry little screen here. It's just going to remind you that you're uh, being silly. Because again, we can't have two things controlling the same screen at the same time. So it gets a little panicky on you uh, when you do that. So even if you were to go like this, you'll see how it brings up the flight plan. If I go like this... You'll see that I lost control, and again, it depends on what you're trying to achieve here. Too many buttons. There we go. <laughs> one thing we do want to check, though, of course, uh, when we're getting ready to do any flight plans in this one, is if we are using the automatic pilot, which I recommend, it's just going to be safer in weather like that, we can go ahead and start getting up our initial values. Now, depending, of course, on what we get for IFR clearance, would change what we'd have to do in here. But as a general rule, what we're probably going to do is we're going to set our selected altitude up to the altitude we need to, if you remember, uh, 6,000 feet. Um, at Martha's Vineyard, they'd probably send us up to 44,000 feet, rather not 40,000. It would be up pretty high. And this would also be a good time to go ahead and uh, program things like getting your initial heading all set. Like I said, we're taking off runway 24 today. So get that one all kind of nice and lined up and everything else all set up like to that effect. Uh, we're not going to be doing any specific speeds. It's very, very tempting to come in here and uh, dial in like a flight, hitting the flick button now and dialing a specific speed. But a lot of the times you just fly that by hand. And then, of course, you flip off control wheel steering and then you enjoy the flight the rest of the way. 
for our next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at more details of the G3000 and kind of actually getting us in the air, as well as how to manipulate these screens to best present you the information that you need for your flights. Enjoy.